we're getting to the final talk of our session by Branko Kokanovic, who has uh, been a long time contributor to OSM. He really likes um, fixing the data a little bit automatic. And there's one thing he's uh, telling us about today is uh, admin boundary controlation. Please. Thanks. It's always hard to be the final before the lunch, so I promise this will be done in 20 minutes, I hope. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, this talk will be about a tool that can uh, help in conflation of arguably the most touchy part of um, OpenStreetMap, which are the administrative boundaries. Um, idea is that after this talk, you have a better understanding why conflating the administrative boundaries is a hard problem. What are the problems there? What are the challenges there? And uh, how you can leverage this tool to, to help you. Uh, I'm not a very creative person. This tool doesn't have a name, so we're just going to call it a tool. Uh, I'm open for the ideas. Um, I want to also acknowledge that this talk is uh, both intended for person here in the audience and streaming as well as any mappers from the future looking at this stream uh, and being referred to this talk. So thanks for expressing interest and thanks from the past. I hope you're all doing fine. Uh, my name is Branko. I'm in OSM for 13 years. Um, I don't get fooled by, lot of, by a lot of change that I usually tend to map things around me that I can see we street complete or such. Uh, and I know it's an irony because this talk is, is about invisible boundaries. Uh, I'm employed in Microsoft, in Maps team, uh, and currently we are trying to figure out how to engage non-mappers to contribute to OpenStreetMap without losing quality, quality, which is a really hard problem. If, if you have any ideas, let me know, I'll be here. Uh, and my colleague will speak tomorrow about Map Builder tool. Uh, I hope this is uh, common knowledge for most of you here, but let's get to the basic uh, admin boundaries. What are they? They are the relations comprised of a couple of tags, boundary administrative type boundary admin level from two to 10, two for countries, higher levels for the lower divisions inside the country. Each country has it different. Basically they're comp comprised of set of base, they form a closed polygon, something like this. And they all force, uh, let's say municipality. And inside this municipality, you can have further divisions, uh, let's say villages. And then um, you notice there are two nodes that are different. Why we need them? Because we want to attach uh, neighboring municipalities to it. So they are needed for conflation. One, uh, another interesting thing about administrative boundaries is they do not exist. They are not physically present. There, there is no on the ground truth. So, Imagine that I'm in, in Firenze, in Florence here, and it starts raining. I'm in some forest, and I start running, and I, then I hit an invisible wall telling me, welcome to Siena Municipality, bienvenuto nel comune di Siena. So it, it doesn't make sense. So, so administrative boundaries are one of those things that we collectively agreed that they exist, like uh, human rights or God, or that Bitcoin has any value. Um, this is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because we can detach them from the rest of, 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 of OpenStreetMap. So OpenStreetMap does not have a layers, but we can pretend with administrative boundaries that they do by not attaching these boundaries to anything else. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a curse because, well, anybody can defy them, right? Uh, and this is exactly why we need authoritative data sets to help us hallucinate together. And my country released such an open data set, and we thought this couple of hundreds of megabytes of JSON it should be easy to, to conflate, like two or three days of work. Uh, well, it turns out we were really wrong. Uh, first of all, you cannot just import uh, hundreds of megabytes in JOSM. And even if you do, you cannot download whole territory of your country in JOSM. And you might be thinking, I'm going to cheat by, by just downloading the administrative boundaries uh, but uh, then if you just download those, you don't know what else you might be moving uh, with it. So it's a really hard problem. And here are some of, of examples of what could go wrong. Um, uh, your geometry can be completely off. For example, if you have 
or same way, something like this. And if you have authority data set telling you it's like this, and you want to merge, conflate those two horizontal ways, if you just do it blindly, you will end up with something like this, invalid geometry, and you don't want that, right? Uh, there are more couple of nuanced problems, like you have your uh, administrative uh, boundary and it, it's split in so many places and you don't want it to be like this, you want it to be more like this, right? Uh, and there are problems like you have a boundary which looks nice and you want to conflate it, but you cannot because one of the ways is stacked. And if you move your boundary, you're going to move the way and you don't want that unless this bound, this no this tagged with boundary stone, in which case you might want to move it, but not sure. Um, there are also problems with shared ways. If you have your administrative boundary and you can have some other linear objects like rivers or roads that are connected to it, again, if you move it, you're going to move this road and you don't want that. Unless this linear object is part of national park or protected area uh, where it would be silly that you move your country and part of your national park remains in, in the other country, right? So if, if uh, the other object is also something that we hallucinate together, it might be make sense to move it together. Uh, then you have a problems with national borders. Uh, solving those is easy, you just don't. <laughs> uh, I'm joking, I'm going to explain later how it, it can be done. Uh, but there are more uh, subtle problems, like you have this innocently looking border way and you think you can move it, but then bam, it's actually part of the national board border. And if you move this horizontal uh, way, you're going to move this node too, and you can create international scandals and you don't want that, right? And uh, then there is other problems, like, like you have uh, administrative boundaries, you have a road, but it only touches this administrative boundary in one node. And again, if you move it, you're going to move it, move the boundary and you don't want that a road, sorry. Uh, and don't start with n place and x place. And if your authority data set has more than 2000 nodes, you cannot import. And basically uh, these tools is not solving all of these problems, but it can help you solve most of these problems. Uh, and more importantly, it can give you the confidence that you don't make silly, embarrassing mistakes uh, along the way. And it can give you speed that you can do relation by relation, way by way, uh, without uh, spending so much time on those little problems. And one note uh, that I want to mention here, this tool is completely manual. So it will not do anything, like upload anything to OSM <laughs> automatically. It will ask you for all its decision, like do you want to unglue stuff, do you want to move, ways uh, they want to upload stuff. So it's it's a manual. So uh, how the tool can be used. So first part is a preparation for your conflation process that you do once. And then once you have your data prepared, cooked, uh, you can do either conflation with this tool uh, or you can do the quality assessment. The tool has a built-in matrix uh, that we're going to talk later how it can uh, express how good your shapes are similar. Uh, and once you have this matrix that tells you how your shapes are overlapping, uh, then you can do that, then you can uh, check that every day, like, and uh, check if there is any regression and you can do alerts on top of that. And all of this is optional. So you can use these tools to do the conflation, or you can say, I don't care about my any tool that does any, any uploads to an OSM. I just want to see how good my data is, or you can just do the alerting. So how to do the preparation? Uh, first, you need to identify your local community, and then you need to engage them and uh, ask, are you okay with having the administrative boundaries as a separate layer? In most of the cases, it's okay, but sometimes it's not, and you need to ask first. Uh, uh, I'm telling you this because this tool actively tries to detach stuff and, and makes administrative boundaries as a separate layer. So if you, if you, if answer is no to this question, then this tool is not for you. Then you need to have discussions with your neighbors, be it other country or other district, depends in the, depending on the border of your import. Uh, and uh, one thing that I found helpful is to ask for open data from their side, because then the discussion is easy. You, you have an open data, they have an open data, and you can just uh, see where the discrepancy is. If there is no open data from their side, then it's a bit fuzzy and you're on your own. 
of course, it goes without saying, follow import guidelines, uh, uh, announce yourself on import mailing list, uh, check the licenses, that kind of stuff. Now, this tool um, has this problem, one problem, it cannot look at the future. So it does not know the data format of your authority data set. So there is a lot of forms and I needed to make it simple so everyone can contribute. So I decided to do the lowest no common denominator and use a simple CSV with only three columns. ID of your relation, municipality, whatever, name of your relation, and well-known text of geometry. This is all you need to, to have to, to, to guide this tool. Uh, if you need uh, help with this, uh, just shoot me an issue on GitHub, uh, and I'd be more than glad to, to help cook this data. Once you have this data, uh, the tool does everything automatically for you, uh, and it will first decompose relations into separate ways, and what do I mean by this? Uh, if we go to the example from the beginning, uh, if, ha if we have some boundaries like this, it will uh, decompose them in a separate ways like this. And for each way that, that we got, it will uh, query OSM for, for this way in OSM, uh, find it by, by neighbors, left and right neighbors. It will use the overpass instance of your of your selection. Uh, there is even documentation how to set up your local overpass instance because it's easier and faster. And uh, it will try to, to, to see if, if this way can be actually conflated. So it will check the endpoints, how far they are, it's configurable. It will check the shape similarity uh, using Hausdorff distance. And uh, it basically, it will unglue stuff and it will do everything it can uh, to, to, to try to conflate the way. When conflating the way, it will reuse the existing way, so history is kept, and it will do it in such a way that minimal number of nodes is, is added or removed to create a new shape, new geometry. In cases where it cannot conflate way, there is some errors that you, the, where the tool is saying just hands off, I don't want to touch this. Uh, it will be noted which is the problematic entity, and at the end, you will get HTML report with, for each way, telling you was it already conflated, was it conflated now, and if it's not conflated, the reason why it's conflated, then offending elements. Um, tool is not pretty, it's console applications. Uh, so for, for, the, for the visitors from the future, they can pause uh, for, for rest of us, you can just look, but this is basically example of how this tool looks like. HTML report is more presentable, uh, it has uh, filters or, or orderings, uh, sort, sorting, but basically th that's it. And once you have your data conflated or during conflation, you can do the quality assessment. So how it works uh, to, to compare data in OSM and in uh, authority data set, you need some key, some ID to, to reference them. It can be the ref tag, or it can be, for example, in Italy, it's ref column I set uh, tag. And, uh, this tool can even help you import this data into OSM. Um, uh, what, it, uh, what it does, it checks the intersection over union metric. It's a simple metric. Uh, if you have two polygons, something like this, this metric tells you what is the ratio of area of their intersection divided by ratio of their union. Uh, and if it's zero, then that means that the shapes do not overlap at all. If it's one, they are completely matching. And as I said uh, before, you can do this uh, when you have this intersection of urea matrix for all of your relations. You can do it to, to check every day if there is any regression in your data. And to give you an example of my country, uh, so my country is fairly small. To give you ballpark estimates, we are slightly larger than Netherlands and Denmark, slightly smaller than Portugal or Iceland. Uh, we got 4,700 settlements of admin level nine, which boils down to 2.2 million nodes. Uh, and um, here are the results. Uh, I don't like to look at the averages. I, I like to look at the 19 percentile. We were 9.4 percent off when we started, which is actually quite good because data was coming from, from who knows where. And in two months, we managed to get down to 1.2 percent. Uh, which is, I think, awesome. Uh, today we are in, at 0, 0.00 something like, as, as designers would say, we are pixel perfect. Um, and every day there is a script that takes 20 minutes to run and detect any regressions. 
Uh, and if you are wondering, is there any regressions? Well, every week there is a, usually it's one regression per week, and it's usually somebody is drawing road something and put, uh, and accidentally attaches to admin boundary and moves it along. No vandalism of any sort. Um, if you go to the GitHub, you will be greeted with some README, which has uh, uh, with which has a nice explanation of how this tool works, how you can run it, uh, pipeline uh, schema of how your data flows, uh, and uh, and uh, that that would be it. So again, if you have uh, if you have uh, any needs to use it, please uh, shoot me an issue on GitHub. Find me here. I'd be more than glad to help. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Um... So we don't have any question in venue less yet. Any questions here from the audience? Hi, thank you. Uh, one problem that often shows up in some official data is that there's mistakes in the official data. Um, is that something you deal with in your script? Is that something you've had to deal with in Serbia? And uh, also with international boundaries, uh, even if you don't get into something as complex as Serbia, uh, one agency on one side of the border has one set of boundaries and the other side is not exactly perfect, perfectly aligned. How do you deal with that? So, uh, yes, uh, this, uh, this uh, tool assumes that you have open data, otherwise it will be just random person drawings, random boundaries, right? Um, well, uh, we had uh, problems with these kind of relations. Uh, you usually either solve it together uh, if they are close enough, if they're not close enough, you can draw two boundaries that uh, you can mention. There are examples in OSM where you can mention who is uh, according to which countries, which boundaries. So you, you can solve it in the, these kind of ways. Thank you. Any other questions? So, if it was a really good talk. Um, I was just interested in did you try this or are you considering using this for something else than boundaries? So I know that boundaries are especially complex, but I don't know, you have many open road data sets that might follow a similar approach or nothing you thought about? Actually, great question. I didn't. Uh, I got my hands on open data for the boundaries, so I solved my initial problem. But uh, it might be interesting what other uh, relations or, or linear objects it can, can can be used for. It needs to be detached, right? But great question, I didn't think about it. So then I have one more question. If you... uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm rushing for lunch. <laughs> lunch, yes, so we probably all. Um, so you said uh, your tool is only when you want to detach the admin boundaries from everything else. So I guess that's the normal way, but you said there are cases where this is not the case. Have you come across them or can you say when, when this might happen? Uh, I didn't cross, uh, I didn't find them in the wild. Um... And uh, this tool does not work for those cases, but even in local communities, there are people that that tells, ah, oh, you want to to join the roads with the boundary. It's the only natural way to do it. So, but uh, this tool does not work for those cases, and I didn't see it in a while in the world. Uh... Probably, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen it either, but uh, there are cases where the boundary is defined by a river, for example, where it should be conflated, I guess. Yeah. I, I was just curious how often this actually uh, happens. And so, in a, an example of uh, there is a border between Serbia and Croatia where the Danube River changed the course. And now uh, there is different claims of this territory, and it's very weird because there is one island, one river island, which nobody claims. <laughs> nobody. No. That's unusual. Normally, it's more the people who claim it. Find me later to explain it. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, we have more questions now. Please wait for the microphone. It comes. Have you found in the wild area that uh, 
are no part of an admin boundary, so inside, so there is like no claim for the region or community or city or something like that. So they, they just have the level two admin, admin boundary. Uh, no, except this uh, part between yeah. Serbia and Croatia. Okay, any more questions? Okay, then I'll let you go. <laughs>